Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers and I'm back in my smart home after three weeks of holidays. So after unpacking your luggage, the first thing you're gonna need to do is check if there's a new version of Home Assistant. Well, I already know there's a new version of Home Assistant. In this video, I'm gonna give you some behind the scenes of the steps that I take before I actually upgrade Home Assistant to a newer version. But first of all, let's roll the intro. To give you a little bit of background, I'm a Home Assistant user which normally regularly updates every single month. Now I do that because I have a tech YouTube channel and I'm invested in knowing the greatest and latest of Home Assistant to bring it here on the channel. But if you're a normal average user, you might not even want to upgrade every single month. Now, before you actually start upgrading at all, the first step is to have some time, get some peace and quiet, wait until the kids are asleep or whatever you need to do. There's something might go wrong. You either need to restore your backup or you're gonna need to fix an integration that's broken. But before we do that, let's jump into Home Assistant. Let's look at the release notes. Open up a browser, Google Home Assistant, and you find all the latest information. At the time of recording, the latest release is 2021.7.4. So I'm gonna click on the release notes. A couple of things I'm looking here. First of all, what are the big features of this release? So there's normally a few big features in every release and then minor features. So I'm going here and I'm noticing a few interesting things. We have a new entity called Select. You can click on it and you got a brief description of what this actually does. Second thing that I'm looking at around is trigger conditions and trigger ideas in Home Assistant. Now this is actually something that I would like to read in more detail because it sounds interesting, it sounds like a cool idea where you have multiple triggers and you want to add conditions and basically you want something, a service or an action to be called only if a certain trigger got triggered. So this is quite interesting, I would look into this quite carefully. But to be fair, Unless you have a specific automation in mind already that you are planning to change to get, you know, use this feature, then there's no rush really to upgrade because even if you upgrade, it's not going to retroactively change your existing code and magically upgrade it. So that's something you need to do yourself. So I like this feature. I'm going to keep this in mind. Other feature that looks quite good is a script debugging. So we have automations debugging. This is since 2021.4. So now we've brought that feature into scripts, which is an excellent, excellent thing. That is something that I might want to also upgrade for. So a couple of good features. Now, what I do is I scroll back to the top and I scan through the other changes. There looks like there's some changes working with dates and templates and new integration. So I will go into new integrations, have a look at these. There might be a uh, actual device that you have that you're waiting for it to be uh, exposed to Home Assistant. Nothing really interesting here. For me, new platforms, nothing that actually interests me again. Now, the crucial thing that we need to look at are the breaking changes. So this is gonna be a game changer. If there are big breaking changes, you might either need to postpone your uh, upgrade to when you have more time or not upgrade at all until you know there's another fix that comes. To find the breaking changes, go back at the top and click right here, you see breaking changes. Click on breaking changes. So over here, I would carefully pay attention to the breaking changes. So reverse proxy seems to be the one that caused a lot of issues recently. And this is a main change that hasn't impacted me. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I'm curious about this uh, Python, but it, it's, when it's talking about things that you don't even understand, so if you read Docker images, Alpine potentially doesn't apply to you. So I won't worry too much about that. By looking at this over here, MQTT, I would, might want to look at this. So it's actually saying that the JSON attributes topic changes. So if you're using that, some of your um, automations might break. The recorder could be something that you want to look into. So you look at this whole list and you figure out if there's anything in this list that is actually gonna break in your system, you do that assessment. What you wanna do is, is wait for a patch number, <laughs> if that is, unless you're so eager to upgrade. Um, and this really depends if you're relying on your home assistant system for your, your smart home for real, or if you're just using it as a, a lab experiment. As you can see, uh, the actual, because we are a few weeks after the actual release, for July, we can say, see on the 8th of July, there was a patch uh, fix dot one, and you can see actually things got, uh, uh, quite a lot of things got fixed. Then there was a second, 
and the third on July the 16th and right now it's July the 21st and so this gives you an idea that there's a lot of things that actually have been fixed in these uh, fixes so if you looked at this at the beginning when it was released on the first Wednesday of the month then this actually changed so I will look at the document at the point where you're going to be upgrading because if you upgrade in a week's time then you're going to probably have a fifth version or even better you're going to go into August and you're going to have a complete new release to, to, to go through. The thing to bear in mind that if you don't upgrade every month to a new version of Home Assistant there's a risk that you start accumulating a lot of changes so the more the many months go along the more breaking changes each month get released and the more that you can miss something and the more painful it can be when you actually upgrade uh, and when you're ready to do that. So once you're ready to upgrade, let's go into Home Assistant and let me show you the actual steps. It's super simple to do. I haven't logged into Home Assistant for quite a while since I've been away and there are some uh, logs are failing. There's some new things have been discovered. So things have happened. I will also take the time now to actually look through your logs Look at your notifications and see if you have any errors. I, it's, I seem to have some errors. So if you want to, you can delve into it and see what's going on if you have time or you could just simply dismiss it and just look at it another time. If you click on the supervisor tab, you can go to the actual uh, pending releases and you can see that the new version over here for Home Assistant Course 2021.74 and we have a new version of the operating system. So you could just click update right here. Here you've got a link to the release notes, which we already looked at. But before all of that, uh, the big recommendation, unless you're already doing snapshots regularly, take a manual snapshot. To do that, click on the create snapshot button, give the snapshot a name. So I always name it with the date. So in that way, when you download the files, you can actually have them, they sort of sort themselves. You can add a password protection if you wish to do that. Uh, you can create a partial snapshot. I would just do a full snapshot unless you have any specific reason why you want to do that. Uh, and now you'll see it spinning for a while. Once this completes, you'll be able to download the snapshot and ensure that you have it somewhere safe. While the snapshot is downloading, remember to like this video if you're getting value out of it and subscribe to the channel for more content like this coming soon. Now you can go back to the supervisor tab and you can click those updates the updates might take around five to ten minutes depending on what hardware you're running in Home Assistant. Once you've actually completed the upgrade, then check for functionality. Have a look at your system, check if everything is working, look at crucial automations that you uh, rely on, depend on. Basically, you want to do some testing, uh, what we would call post-release post testing of your system. Just have a look at it. And then the next couple of days, keep an eye on the start on your smart home to see if anything that is supposed to be working didn't work. Let me know in the comments section down below if you upgrade your home assistant every month or if you're not bothered and you just let it run and one day you'll sort it out. If you're interested in automation, then I'm gonna leave you here with a video where I actually show you my series of home automation, complex automations, home assistant versus no ready, you can click right here. And you can subscribe to the channel right here to be notified when the next video jobs. This is Geo from Smart Home Makers. I wish you all the best. See ya. Peace.